and gentlemen, distinguished guests and esteemed participants, a very warm welcome to the technical session of the International Conference on Media and Journalism. We are gathered here today to delve into the captative sub-theme of media content and facets of journalism in a world shaken by narrow politician political gains. It is a pleasure to have you all here as we embark on a journey of insightful discussion and thought-provoking conversations. Before we commence, let us introduce our esteemed guests who will be present who will be presiding over this session. Joining us today on the chair are two remarkable personalities who have made significant contributions to the field of media and journalism. Please welcome Dr. Krishna Ma'am and Dr. Ruhilal Ma'am. Before we begin the technical session, let me introduce our chair. So Dr. Ruhilal Ma'am is a associate professor at MIT School of Communication Amity University, Noida. Dr. Lal is DLIT at holds PhD degree in mass communication. She has 22 years of work experience, blend of 8 years of industry, HT Media Lit, Limited, Purple Focus Private Limited, Noida Ad Agency, 14 years of teaching and research experience at Amity School of Communication. She received an award of Best Media Educator of the Year 2022 in Advertising Research. So now before we delve into the enlightening presentations, let's establish a few ground rules. Each presenter will be allotted a total of 10 minutes to present their research, ideas or case studies. A gentle reminder that time is of the essence and we request the presenters to adhere to the time limit following, following each presentation. There will be a question and answer round lasting for five minutes, allowing for engaging discussion and further insights. Dr. Krishna is our co-chair. The Dr. Krishna has over 24 years of academic and journalism experience of which last 12 years have been spent in academics. She has 12 years of on-field journalistic experience of working in mainstream print media. Dr. Pandey is also an alumnus of the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, New Delhi, and a graduate from the prestigious Sophia Girls College, Ajmer. Dr. Pandey has more than 50 articles published in various newspapers and four research papers published in international journals out of which one eye generation and handwritten communication. A study of Gen Z on post millennials propensity towards handwritten communication, published in the International Journal of Research Culture, Society has been recognized by LAP Lambert Academic Publishing. LAP is, a, is an associated member of the American Booksellers Association. The Booksellers Association in the UK and a member of the Borsen Versitz des Deusich, the German Booksellers Association. So now we will start the session. Without further ado, I request the first participant, Ms. Uh, Oli Tyagi, and the co-author is Dr. Krishna Pandey. Her presentation is on Jalvayu Smart Krishi Takniki Ke Prati Jagrukta Prasar Me Digital Media Ki Bhumika. Sabhi Upasthit Shiksha Vido Aur Mere Sayak Shodhartyo Ko Mera Sadar Pranam. Mera Shodh Patr Hai Jalvayu Smart Krishi Takniki Ke Prati Jagrukta Prasar Me Digital Media Ki Bhumika. Is Me Hem Baat Karenge Ki Digital Media Tikau Krishi Yani Ki Sustainable Agriculture और जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि तकनीकों को अपनाने के लिए प्रोत्साहित करने में किसानों की किस किस तरह मदद कर रहा है या कैसी भूमिका निभा रहा है और आगे उसमें क्या संभावनाएं हैं जलवायु परिवर्तन एक बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है यह एक ऐतिहासिक मुद्दा है भौगोलिक मुद्दा है राजनीतिक मुद्दा है इसलिए इस पर बहुत ज्यादा बात नहीं करेंगे लेकिन मैं आपको थोड़ा सा इंसाइट देना चाहूंगी कि हमारे प्लेनेट पर जलवायु परिवर्तन किस तरह से काम करता है जब 
हमारे सूर्य की किरणें पृथ्वी से टकराती हैं तो ज़्यादातर जो रेडिएशन है वो वापस चला जाता है लेकिन अगर हमारी एटमोसफियर में कुछ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज हैं जैसे कि कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड और क्लोरोफ्लोरोकार्बन तो ये उसको एब्जॉर्ब कर लेती हैं जिससे हमारे एटमोसफियर में तापमान बढ़ता है मौसम की दशाओं में जो परिवर्तन है वो मानव जनित तो और प्राकृतिक हो सकता है इसलिए जलवायु परिवर्तन की स्थिति सामने आ रही है पहले की स्थिति क्या थी 2014 में वातावरण में कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड की मात्रा चार पार्ट्स प्रति मिलियन से कम थी जबकि वर्तमान स्थिति ये है कि औसतन पार्ट्स चार तक बढ़ चुके हैं वैश्विक तापमान में उन्नीस के मुकाबले लगभग एक दशमलव एक डिग्री सेल्सियस तक अधिक तापमान पहुंच चुका है भविष्य के भविष्य के बारे में अनुमान है कि अगर सी टू समेत अन्य ग्रीन हाउस गैसों का हमने नियंत्रण नहीं किया तो 2030 तक वैश्विक तापमान एक दशमलव पाँच डिग्री सेल्सियस और बढ़ जाएगा संसद पुस्तकालय में संग्रहित एक रिपोर्ट कहती है कि जलवायु परिवर्तन के कारण दो तक भारतीय कृषि उत्पादन में दस से चालीस की कमी आ सकती है अब हम बात करते हैं जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि तकनीक क्या है इसके तीन मुख्य उद्देश्य हैं एक तो किसानों की आय में सतत वृद्धि करना और खेती को जलवायु परिवर्तन के अनुकूल बनाना ग्रीन हाउस गैस उत्सर्जन को कम करना अब क्लाइमेट स्मार्ट एग्रीकल्चर हमारे लिए क्यों ज़रूरी है हमें प्रयत्न करना है कि जो कृषि है वो मानवता को स्थायी रूप से भोजन खिला सके और बदलती जलवायु की स्थिति में भी किसानों की जो आजीविका है वो सुरक्षित रहे जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधियाँ क्या होती हैं एग्रोफॉरेस्ट्री हम जानते हैं कि खेती के लिए बहुत बड़ा बहुत बड़ी ज़मीन चाहिए जिसके लिए बहुत सारे पेड़ काटे जा रहे हैं लेकिन एग्रोफॉरेस्ट्री एक ऐसी जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि है जिसमें हम खेतों के साथ साथ पेड़ भी उगाते हैं ताकि जितनी भी कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड है उसको वो एब्जर्व कर लें और जैसे मृदा संरक्षण हो सकता है इससे और जल संरक्षण में भी ये बहुत मदद करता है <coughs> अगली जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि है जैविक पोषण हम जानते हैं कि जितने भी एग्रोकेमिकल हैं वो हमारी मिट्टी के नीचे के पानी को बहुत ज़्यादा नुकसान पहुंचाते हैं साथ ही ये मीथेन का उत्पादन करते हैं जो कि एक ग्रीन हाउस गैस है और हमारा तापमान बढ़ाती है एटमोसफियर का इसलिए जैविक पोषण जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि के लिए एक अच्छा समाधान हो सकता है इंटरकॉपिंग एक जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि है ये जैव विविधता के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है ताकि हमारी मिट्टी में जो तरह तरह के पोषण हैं वो बने रहें अलग अलग अगर हम उगाते हैं एक एक खेत में अगर हम अलग अलग तरह की फसलें उगाते हैं तो इससे हमारी जैव विविधता बनी रहती है जल प्रबंधन हम सभी जानते हैं कि जो जल है वो एक सीमित संसाधन है और कृषि में इसका बड़े रूप में इस्तेमाल होता है इसलिए जल प्रबंधन भी एक जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि मानी जाती है बहुत ज़्यादा अपग्रेड करने पर वर्टिकल फार्मिंग एक ऐसी जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि है जो हमें एक सॉल्यूशन दे सकती है ज़्यादा ज़मीन ना घेरने का हम आने वाले समय में जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि विधि के तहत एक एक छोटी जगह पर ज़्यादा सब्जियां पैदा कर सकते हैं ज़्यादा अनाज पैदा कर सकते हैं अब डिजिटल मीडिया और जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि के बीच क्या संबंध है मैं इसमें थोड़ा सा प्रकाश डालना चाहूँगी डिजिटल मीडिया और जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि मैंने देखा कि जितने भी हमारे साइट्स हैं जो क्षेत्रीय भाषाओं में काम करती हैं उनमें से ज़्यादातर साइट्स केवल ऐसा कंटेंट बना रही हैं जो स्टूडेंट्स के लिए तैयार किया गया है वो किसानों के लिए नहीं है उसकी भाषा भी ऐसी नहीं है जो किसानों को समझ में आए साथ में उस पर ट्रैफिक भी नहीं है ए एच आर एफ जो कि एक सर्च इंजन ऑप्टोमाइजेशन टूल है उसकी मदद से मैंने इस पर आने वाले ऑर्गेनिक ट्रैफिक को देखा तो दृष्टि आई एजुकेशन पर इस पर दो लाख व्यूज़ आते हैं प्रति माह लेकिन जो इन्होंने जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि पर लिखा है उस पर कोई भी पाठक उपलब्ध नहीं है सेम <coughs> रिसर्च से जुड़ी वेबसाइट्स हैं और जो कृषि पत्रकारिता से जुड़ी वेबसाइट्स हैं उन पर प्रति माह ट्रैफिक तो आ रहा है लेकिन जो जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि पर उन्होंने क्षेत्रीय भाषाओं में काम किया है उस पर ट्रैफिक बहुत कम है या बिल्कुल ना के बराबर है यूट्यूब पर भी अगर हम सर्च करते हैं कुछ की जैसे जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि या क्लाइमेट स्मार्ट एग्रीकल्चर तो उस पर भी जो कंटेंट है यहाँ पे मैंने एक स्क्रीनशॉट लगाया था वो दिखाई नहीं दे रहा है तो उस पर जो कंटेंट है वो भी मेन रूप से जो है यू पी एस सी एस्पिरेंट्स के लिए बनाया गया कंटेंट है किसानों के लिए उस उस पर कुछ भी मुझे उपलब्ध नहीं मिला जो क्षेत्रीय भाषाओं में हो आसान भाषा में हो विस्तृत हो किसानों को उसमें शामिल करता हो इसके बाद ये क्वालिटेटिव रिसर्च करने के बाद मैंने अपनी रिसर्च मैथोडोलॉजी में एक रैंडम सैम्पलिंग की मदद से एक सर्वे किया 
जिसमें मैंने पचास ऐसे लोगों को शामिल किया जिसमें से बारह प्रतिशत किसान थे और जो कृषि कार्य से जुड़े हुए लोग थे बारह प्रतिशत बाकी किसान परिवारों के सदस्य थे हमने उनसे पूछा कि क्या जलवायु परिवर्तन ने कृषि को प्रभावित किया है ज्यादातर किसानों का यह मानना है कि हाँ जलवायु परिवर्तन ने कृषि को प्रभावित किया है लेकिन इसमें कुछ रोचक तथ्य सामने आते हैं कि सत्तावन प्रतिशत प्रतिभागी आज भी इस बात के अनजान है कि कृषि कार्य भी जलवायु पर नकारात्मक असर डालती है उनको इसकी जानकारी ही नहीं है इनमें से 20 परसेंट लोग ऐसे भी थे जिन्होंने ये राय दी कि जलवायु सिर्फ और सिर्फ कारखानों की वजह से दूषित होती है और कृषि का इसमें कोई रोल नहीं है कोई भूमिका नहीं है नब्बे प्रतिशत लोगों ने स्वीकार किया कि बदलते मौसम के प्रति ये चिंता महसूस करते हैं और प्रकृति से सीधे रूप से जुड़े होने के कारण उसे बचाने का प्रयास करना चाहते हैं अब मैंने उनसे पूछा कि डिजिटल जानकारी हासिल करने में प्रमुख बाधाएं क्या क्या हैं तो उन्होंने कहा 24 परसेंट लोग ऐसे थे जिन्होंने माना कि तकनीकी ज्ञान की कमी है और वो डिजिटल रूप से जानकारी हासिल करने में बाधा महसूस करते हैं कुछ ने कहा महंगा इंटरनेट और इंटरनेट की भाषा भी उनको बाधा दिखाई देती है और अट्ठारह लोगों ने यह माना कि वहाँ महत्वपूर्ण जानकारी नहीं है ज़्यादातर किसान किसानों के पास मोबाइल फ़ोन है और वो इंटरनेट को एक्सेस करते हैं और उन्होंने कहा कि उन्हें कोई बाधा नहीं होती 46 परसेंट किसान ऐसे थे जिन्हें डिजिटल जानकारी हासिल करने में कोई बाधा नहीं थी जलवायु परिवर्तन से कृषि व्यवसाय को सुरक्षित रखने में डिजिटल मीडिया से जानकारी हासिल करने की ज्यादातर किसान अपेक्षा रखते हैं और उन्हें लगता है कि डिजिटल मीडिया इसमें आने वाले समय में उनकी मदद कर सकता है अब यहाँ पे निष्कर्ष क्या निकलते हैं निष्कर्ष ये है कि क्षेत्रीय भाषाओं भाषाओं में इस विषय पर ऐसी जानकारी का अभाव है जो विशेष रूप से किसानों को जलवायु स्मार्ट खेती के बारे में विस्तृत जानकारी देती हो या उन्हें चर्चा में शामिल करती हो सभी आंकड़े किसानों को सूचना देने में डिजिटल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म की सार्थकता को कम करते हुए दिखाई देते हैं जलवायु स्मार्ट खेती एक महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दा होने पर भी मीडिया और किसान दोनों को आकर्षित करने में विफल रहा है जो कि एक साइंटिफिक कम्युनिकेशन की कमजोर कड़ी कही जा सकती है कृषि पत्रकारों का रुझान नई तकनीकी और नई खेती की ओर है मैंने बहुत सारे यूट्यूब चैनल्स ऐसे देखे जिन पर नए ट्रैक्टर्स के बारे में जानकारी है लेकिन जो जलवायु परिवर्तन है एकदम नया मुद्दा है अभी किसानों के लिए रूढ़ सुना भी नहीं है इसके बारे में उस पर उनका कोई स्पष्ट ध्येय नहीं है कोई स्ट्रैटी नहीं है क्लियर इस रिसर्च की कुछ लिमिटेशन थी कि यह केवल छोटे से समूह का प्रतिनिधित्व करता है और मैंने इस पर सोशल मीडिया पेज और उस पर ग्रुप्स को ग्रुप्स के कंटेंट को नहीं देखा है यहाँ पे मैं कुछ समाधान देना चाहूँगी कि जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि को पॉपुलर बनाने के लिए किसानों के बीच लोकप्रिय बनाने के लिए नए डिजिटल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म बनाए जाए जलवायु स्मार्ट खेती के लिए ऐसे विकसित किए जा सकते हैं प्लेटफॉर्म इनमें ऑनलाइन फॉरम हो सकते हैं मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन हो सकती हैं सोशल मीडिया ग्रुप हो सकते हैं सरकारी सहायता जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि प्रौद्योगिकों को अपनाने में मीडिया को टैक्स ब्रेक और सब्सिडी की हेल्प देनी चाहिए ऐसी जो जिम्मेदार मीडिया है उसके साथ सरकारी प्रसारण केंद्रों और कृषि विकास केंद्रों को वित्तीय साझेदारी करनी चाहिए और कृषि संगठनों का डिजिटल हस्तक्षेप जितनी भी हमारे अनुसंधान संगठन है सार्वजनिक कृषि संस्थाएँ हैं उन्हें अपने डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म को और अधिक प्रभावी बनाना होगा वहाँ पर प्रासंगिक जानकारी देनी चाहिए साथ में ऐसे फीडबैक का सेक्शन भी उन्होंने रखना चाहिए जहाँ पर किसान सीधे रूप से उनसे जुड़ सके उनसे सवाल पूछ सके और अपनी राय भेज सके और लास्ट हमें धरातलीय पत्रकारिता को बढ़ावा देना है जनसंचार तंत्र से अपेक्षा है कि वो जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि प्रौद्योगिकों के लाभों के बारे में किसान और सामान्य जनता को शिक्षित करें डिजिटल अवेयरनेस कैंपेन चलाएँ गाँव में पहुँच सामुदायिक कार्यक्रमों का आयोजन करें और जलवायु स्मार्ट कृषि तकनीक की सफलता की कहानियों के बारे में जानकारी प्रसारित करें सो अवर नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट इज मिस्टर कुणाल रंजन हु सेकेंड ऑथर इज डॉक्टर कृष्णा पांडे द टॉपिक इज एक्सप्लोरिंग मनीष कश्यप राइज टू फेम थ्रू पैरा सोशल रिलेशनशिप आर सेंटिमेंटल एनालिसिस ऑफ यू टू कमेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी to chair and the co-chair of this technical session to my respected faculty members uh, i see Dan, dean ma'am hod ma'am anybody else and uh, my uh, and my fellow uh, journeymen in this research uh, so the topic of my research 
was very interesting to me uh, for some reasons. A, I also come from the same state that this popular YouTuber comes from. And uh, there, there has been significant ups and downs in this, uh, in his YouTube channel, which I just wanted to explore and show. So <coughs> let me proceed with the presentation. At, as you can see that uh, uh, Manish Kashyap is, uh, has got all the badges of YouTube uh, because he has a lot of followers, as in 6.8 million followers when I saw last. And uh, his has been a very recent journey. Uh, so he started, he passed out of an engineering college in Pune in 2016 started a YouTube channel in Bihar, which was called Sachtak News in 2018. 2020, he also tried his hand in politics and he uh, cont contested as an independent MLA. He lost. But, and, and re very recently, as in uh, 10 years, uh, I think many of you would have seen a trending video on YouTube in which a whole bridge had collapsed and got into Ganga River in Bhagalpur. So if you, uh, and, that, and then, you know, while this uh, video started trending, there was another video that started trending uh, of Manish Kashyap. And this uh, Manish, because Manish Kashyap had gone to the same site one year ago, exactly one year ago. So this, the, uh, the bridge had submerged in, uh, in earlier this, earlier this year and a year ago Manish Kashyap had gone to the same bridge and and since he was an engineer he had uh, he had put many falls to food and said that this bridge would uh, collapse one day or the later and one year later that whole thing so so many of his supporters you know uh, I, I've taken some screenshots from Twitter uh, with the dates and they said that hey see that Manish Kashyap was you know telling this and this happened and he was an engineer so he had an informed opinion and many of them were also saying that you know the if the government would have taken steps in time um, this would not have probably happened so this was the slide that I wanted to specifically refer to that while this video of uh, his reportage was trending this guy was in jail this guy continues to be in jail so the reason why he got into a legal soup is that uh, on is very recent as well in March 2023 on on 2nd March specifically he uh, he downloaded uh, he uploaded on YouTube an anonymous source video saying that Bihari's uh, Bihari laborers are being beaten in Tamil Nadu and uh, so as you can see there is the source does not have a picture it only had a voice and then, you know, subsequently he went to Tamil Nadu, he went gaga over it, and he probably uh, just uh, backhand, uh, uh, just a kind of approximate video count, but he must have put some 20 videos. The government also got into a hyperactive mode. It, went, it sent uh, its high delegation to uh, Tamil Nadu to investigate that matter. And then finally, the government concluded that this was a fake, fake video, and then the legal soup started. And on March 18, uh, and between March 2nd and March 18, multiple FIRs, from some from uh, his own state, some from Tamil Nadu got last, and finally, on 18th March, he had to surrender. That was a video that, he, for every uh, thing that he did, he's a very uh, uh, YouTube personality for everything that he did, he uploaded a video. And then finally, uh, uh, from then till 22nd June, that is today, he continues to be in Tamil Nadu jail. So that's the controversy aspect that I did not want to miss out. So, so simultaneously, on March 18th, he, he surrendered. On 23rd March, there were simultaneous protests all over Bihar. And as you can see there, uh, I've taken the screenshots from major news channels, that it was very well covered because and if you can see, uh, most of the participants remain to be like youth participants who were causing that simultaneous thing um, to happen. 
so the theoretical framework in which I have uh, tried to curiously uh, get into uh, the uh, understanding as why did arrest, why did his arrest uh, evoke such strong emotions is the theoretical framework that I have tried to understand it through is parasocial relations, which was first uh, explained by Houghton and Wall in 1956, who coined the term. But then there have been many studies uh, some on YouTube also, but mainly uh, linear media. So one thing that two specific characters that come out of uh, parasocial relations uh, between the uh, broadcaster and the audience is that A, they are asymmetrical, that is, uh, and B, they are enduring. And then the tool through which I try to look into this phen phenomenon is sentimental analysis. So if I may borrow from the very in fashion uh, terms of artificial intelligence and machine learning, these uh, sentimental analysis have been broadly categorized to be of four types, aspect-based, aspect uh, aspect which can be further get, uh, divided into positive, negative, neutral comments. Then there is a fine-grained sentimental analysis, which is lexicon-based, uh, which gives parameters like intensity and emotions. Then there is intent-based, where the purpose gets revealed, as in if that person was making a query or a complaint or command, desire. And then we have emotion-based uh, sentimental analysis. So my, since my study was exploratory, I, uh, we, since our study was exploratory, we kind of tried to analyze uh, this parasocial uh, um, uh, relation with, through all these tools of sentimental analysis. So uh, for a macro analysis, I chose, uh, uh, we chose around uh, the last 100 videos that were uploaded on the YouTube. And as you can see, there are clear spikes in, in many of the videos. As in, while, while, the, um, while the average comments would have been around 900,000, in some of the videos, there are like 27,000 comments, 12,000 comments. So the, the actual sample size um, was a lot, so I could not do sentimental analysis for all of them. So I, they were more than 20,000. So I have just taken uh, uh, 1,000 comments of them out of those uh, 20,000. And then I have, uh, I had tried, since the matter was very controversial, so I tried not to include those sentiments which would have uh, evoked a major reaction as in those pertaining to the Tamil Nadu workers and all. So when I filtered those comments, uh, I got a data set of uh, 20 videos not relating to Tamil Nadu controversy or the FIR. So those, the analysis framework was before that, before the emotional roller coaster started. So the first 50 comments of each video were taken for analysis, the first 50 videos. Uh, they were extracted using uh, Python programming and uh, so what I observed is, uh, and it has also come out in literature review that uh, most of the comments are in English or mixed code what we say. So it is very difficult for everybody, uh, for even machine uh, learning to understand the context uh, of mixed code, English, English comments. So everything had to be translated to one particular language. Since I was on, on, on an exploratory route, I tried chat GPT and translated all those comments they were, that were in English, Hinglish, Hindi, to standardized English. And I found the results to be quite accurate. Uh, the the 1,000 chosen comments were manually coded to correspond to con uh, sentimental code and call for action. And this is the sample of the, uh, I, I think it's not legible, but in, in this, I have, um, you can see that there are 20 videos 
20 videos that I have taken for analysis. Uh, there are, uh, that is the subject, second row, uh, second column is the subject. After that is the up date, date uplaid, uploaded. And then uh, uh, the total number of co uh, comments. And these are the quotes that I try to understand the conversation with. As in, uh, if you see the first uh, column, second column, the sentiment of the code, th uh, the sentiments of the respondents could range from anywhere from inspiring to positive, and then we come to neutral, and then we had negative and even propaganda comments. Similarly, uh, what were the uh, what were the authors? Uh, what were these um, commenters trying to, wh what was the broader context in which the commenters were trying to make comments? So whether they were asking for solidarity, whether they were asking questions, whether they were adding more to the story, or seeking help, or refuting the story altogether. So our analysis found that most of the comments, uh, that is 68%, were mainly positive. So I've also given an example uh, of one such comment. 14% were neutral and 18% of the comments were negative. What, uh, what I found is that most of the co uh, many of the comments are not relevant. Many of the comments in videos are not relevant. So uh, probably because of the font, it is not negligible, but there were comments like Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and there were comments like first like, probably saying that I did the first like to this video or the first comment. And then there were incorrect sentences in the um, comment. So when I went to the uh, analysis about the hopes and aspirations, what audience said about Manish Kashyap, there was one term that was coming out it's a very uh, Bihar UP t term of bhaiya. So you can see that uh, bhaiya is one very uh, common term that is uh, signified for like um, giving respect. Then there were comments from the fans that can be broadly categorized as fans. So there were fans who were inviting Manish Kashyap to to their uh, to their place, and then there were the the fan club who were saying that uh, you know we are always with you, Manish Bhaiya, you are our pride, etc. When I talk about journalism, there was uh, <coughs> I I found two comments. First is that there was hope, and second there was inspiration. Okay. On his videos, uh, many many stated that he is an honest journalist, and some st uh, a comment said that there is a Bharat Ratna. He should be given. Another said that he should be. He uh, he tells stories for poor man. There were also comments that reflected on his aspirations as an aspiring politician, and you can say th see that there is a hoarding of Manish Kashyap. They, they were expecting uh, Manish Kashyap to explain the matter as in uh, to various stories where uh, they had not been uh, they, the, uh, Manish Kashyap was also ex expected to explain the hyper local problems of, the, of their area and um, for example relating to education for relating to the voicelessness of people so it's not that the comments were always positive. There were negative comments also. So uh, most of the commented, ref most, uh, many of the comments that were negative reflected the agony of common people. So there were complaints from the, to the government. There were complaints to the police. There were complaints about no action being taken to the government and police in terms of FIR, etc. Uh, there were also editorial corrections in places where uh, 
the comment the audience thought that the comments were not relevant they were uh, comments as in uh, in one particular video there was that uh, said that this should not do yeah and then they were extremely negative uh, comments so uh, my discussions primarily revolve around three points is that uh, first the the comments have a cognitive functions audience do feel connected with the youtuber the second is the limitations of computer based analysis of uh, the software uh, there are various softwares that are available to analyze uh, for example mosdi and all but they just grade the comments into positive and negative and they don't give any sentiment uh, context broader context the third thing that i wanted to reflect is chat gpt uh, as we uh, is being uh, discussed very often is very effective tool to translate uh different languages into one standardized language and i i wish to explore uh, this topic further under the guidance of uh, my guide uh, dr uh, krishna pande implications of the study first in in the current uh, scenario it adds literature to the growing field of social listening for researchers uh, it provides such type of sentimental analysis provides a tool of how to understand engagement of on videos youtube videos beyond the number of likes comments and share for youtuber for youtube there is if they can develop this tool and make a recommendation of videos not only on types of comments or the what we have watched but if they can contextualize the comments into positive and negative and then make a recommendation based on that and for youtubers also if these comments can be clustered it is it would be easier for them to uh, go through the thousands of comments and find the topics that they need to reflect on thank you so our uh, next participant is dr im iram rizvi whose topic is indian television in transition and the trans media reception and fandom on social media platform ma'am please come on uh, good afternoon everybody uh, the uh, my name is dr iram rizvi and the topic of my research paper my presentation is indian television in transition trans media reception and fandom on social media um we have been um, all of us have been growing watching television um in our childhood and even now we are great fans of uh, television but right now we are seeing the generation z the youth the young people they are more inclined towards online platforms so on the one hand where we uh, find a variety of content the television viewership among the younger people it seems to be stagnant if not decreasing and so i thought that why not uh, uh, give it a chance and i studied how television is uh, transitioning Uh, i have been watching lot of there have been lot of uh, series or a lot of uh, um program that have been already broadcasted on telecasted on television and then we uh, uh watch them on youtube uh, their videos sometimes their uh, short videos and then uh, in the comment section we understand how people react to them uh, audience uh, viewership and trp was always there it was measured in terms of trp and now it is um, uh, first it was the tam now the bark is doing it while this uh, my study that focus on how at an instant that the viewers are doing it that there is not a, some kind of a, a socket or some application but they are doing it at instantly this is the basic what i wanted to understand uh, going through the introduction uh, what i have already discussed about the television how it has been always and how is it an important part and how it has changed over the years from the basic programming and down then becoming more and more interactive uh, in earlier times we used to have a vertical um, communication process from top down but now we are seeing a swift change in it my subject study is i have studied the one uh, serial that uh, one sitcom uh, uh, 
Tarak Mehta ka ulta chashma. Uh, first, I wanted to do, um, uh, we already know that the, the concept of synergy, when the same program has been launched on multiple uh, platforms. And this transmedia storytelling is doing the same, that the same content has been um, uh, broadcasted and it has, the viewership is on different platforms. And for my study, I had, I first tried to do it on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media platforms. But on Facebook, uh, there was no comment section. So only the likability will not provide me any result. So I have only focused on the YouTube content. The aim of the research is to understand the engagement on social media platform, how the audience do it, and what is their taste and their intertextualities, how they select, and it also helps me to understand the heterogeneity of the audience. The objectives of my study are to understand the ways in which Indian audience are using the social media platforms to engage uh, in their favorite television programs. And the other thing what I found, I studied a lot of uh, research and while I was doing my literature review, the one thing I found that the language function is not much studied, at least in Indian context. So I'll be doing that also. So significance is like it will uh, add a uh, literature and then this results could be used by the broadcasters, how they have to frame their programs and uh, could help the scholars and researchers who are already working in this domain. For the present paper, I have uh, chosen two research questions. How Indian uh, viewers are using social media platforms and interacting with their television contact with focus to the favorite sitcom, Tarak Mehta ka ulta chashma. And how does uh, transmedia storytelling increase the audience engagement of television programs and help in prom promoting the traditional formats and play a pivotal role in the expansion of television in India? Uh, to do the research, I have um, selected social, con my theoretical framework is social constructivism, which suggests the reality constructed through the meaning uh, basis based on the social and cultural context in the programs, how they ha the um, audience construct the meaning from the whatever the content they have been given. And this social, and this social, social constructivism helped me in building the language functions, which I will be discussing later on. My sample study a sample, it might be huge, but uh, to simplify it, I just uh, had broken down it in the categories. It is uh, about 4,087 4, comments that I have chosen. And I have only focused on one channel, the uh, official Tarak Mehta Ka Ulta Chashma. Mm, the other uh, one, uh, there are other um, YouTube channels, handles where it has been broadcast, but I have, among them, I have only focused on one. Uh, so this is my sample frame and I have also used systematic sampling from 3rd May to 3rd June but I have skipped one day. Uh, for 3rd May the views have been mentioned and how many posts have been done and how many likes uh, that the particular webisode received. So my uh, study, uh, family, um, study findings suggest that there has been millions of likes and uh, comments that have been generated. The, parts, the users are usually acting as uh, participants and this the comment section has been considered as the preferred uh, place for the uh, to analysis. The themes that have been generated in that uh, uh, YouTube comments is the most of the comments focus on the actor's performance so because the actors are that create the environment and then the plot, the webisode, the story and everything and sometimes the positive emotions that they evoke and that uh, they feel like uh, that comic situations and other things and the user conversation with each other when they relate the incidents to themselves and then the negative or criticism when they criticize the writer and the producer why they have uh, chosen such a situation this situation could be made much better here negative means the criticism but I have written it here negative otherwise it was written as criticism and then the miscellaneous comments while they sometimes use their own uh, interpretation and sometimes they put links of the previous episodes or next episode in the same comment box. The major language function which I uh, identified was the referential function. Uh, 
where the users 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 what they do they usually provide the more information the, what they have uh, seen in the videos they provide the additional information they are just interpreting the events and then the emotive function for example they feel happy about it if the situation is some tragic how sad they feel and relate with their own way and then when they have to and then poetic function and connotative where they say that the director should have done something like that and fatic when they show their presence that we are still connected with the uh, content so major themes when there is a discussion about the episode ref referential and the poetic move is usually used while they discuss about the social issues in the episode the emotive mo move has been used and when there is a, has been learning from the episodes and the dialogues meta living lingual and connotative uh, move has been used and then discussion about the actors when they discuss the acting of the actors connotative and referential motive has been used and in the same serial when they uh, when some situation is about the culture uh, celebrating the festivals or some cultural thing is shown poetic and the emotive move has been used so uh, most of the comments are generated are uh, the comments are usually in the conversational and in informal ways and controversy there the where in the traditional form where the audience has no control over the program here the uh, audience show their presence through subscription comments likes and views uh, which could be used in future to uh, discontinue that uh, i mean sometime uh, which could in a way replace the trp system and uh, most of the material pertaining to the episodes are the didactic that the elements which are already present in the uh, uh, videos uh, regarding the uh, language function the referential function has been used mostly that is 44% followed by the emotive and the connotative functions and the least has been used as a phatic function the study is based on the activities and the discourse of the fan communities that are able to uh, capture the discussion that reaffirms the central transmedia what my research says and uh, this also shows the active fan following that the uh, audience is not so homogeneous they uh, continue to manifest their um, tastes and, uh, and at the same time they also uh, reveal the flaws in the plot and scene this is the how the uh, they manifest that they are an active participants and sometimes the um uh, during the comments they try to uncover the, some of the secrets that has not been revealed in the uh, videos and sometimes they provide hint and clues so and whether not minding if they come true or not the study suggests that the huge number of comments that the fans are providing makes it more usable and more engaging at at it also increases the traffic and the personal insights they provide and finally the uh, study provides insights about the importance of social media platforms the synergy they enable for trans media storytelling as compared to the traditional programs um, and it can assist the producers involved the, to compete in terms of audience demands so our next participant is mr shashank kumar whose presentation is on gramin sanskriti ke punar dwar mein uh, social media ki bhumika please come on the stage uh, namaskar main shashank kumar sabse pehle aap sabhi ko namaskar karta hu aur uh, main second year student hu dme ka so mera topic hai gramin sanskriti ke punaruddhar mein social media ki bhumika sabse pehle introduction gramin sanskriti ek uh, maulik roop se samajik bhartiya samaj ka hissa hai jo हमसे जो शहरी इलाकों से अलग है और जहाँ पे बहुत ही सादगीपूर्ण लोग रहते हैं जिसमें उनके अंदर हम हमने ये गौर किया है कि सहजता होती है और प्रकृति से जुड़े हुए लोग होते होते हैं सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज इस शोध में हम इसके पुनर्जीवित हो रहे अलग अलग आयामों और चुने गए विषयों को जो भी मैंने टॉपिक चुना है उसके बारे में जानेंगे और इसमें लोगों की क्या रुचि है वो वो पता करेंगे सो so, सबसे पहले साहित्य समीक्षा या लिटरेचर रिव्यू जिसमें मैंने कुछ लोगों के जब पढ़ रहा था स्टडी कर रहा था तो इसमें कुछ लोगों के मैं उनमें व्यू देखे तो उनकी ज़्यादातर जो ओपिनियंस थे शोध प्रक्रिया इसमें मैंने 
मैक्सिमम ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा बस सौ लोगों के रैंडम सौ लोगों के मैंने सर्वेक्षण किया सर्वे किया जिसमें पाँच प्रश्नों के उत्तर उनसे जानने की कोशिश की मैंने ये क्या प्रश्न थे आप सोशल मीडिया के कौन से माध्यम को सबसे ज़्यादा उपयोग करते हैं तो उनमें उनका जवाब था सेवेंटी थ्री तिहत्तर दशमलव पाँच प्रतिशत लोगों का जवाब था इंस्टाग्राम और इसमें वो ग्रामीण संस्कृति को किस तरह से वो देखते हैं और उसमें कैसे कंटेंट उनको पसंद आते हैं तो उन्होंने इसमें छप्पन प्रतिशत लोगों ने कहा कि हाँ वो पसंद करते हैं और इसमें आठ प्रतिशत ऐसे भी थे जो नहीं करते हैं और तीसरा क्वेश्चन था क्या आपको सोशल मीडिया संस्कृति को पुनर्जीवित कर रहा है क्या आपको लगता है कि सोशल मीडिया ग्रामीण संस्कृति को पुनर्जीवित कर रहा है तो तिरसठ दशमलव चार प्रतिशत लोगों ने कहा हाँ उनको लगता है कि हाँ वो पुनर्जीवित कर रहा है सोशल मीडिया ग्रामीण संस्कृति को सोशल मीडिया का कौन सा माध्यम ग्रामीण संस्कृति के पुनरुद्धार में अधिक भूमिका निभा रहा है तो अड़तीस दशमलव छः लोगों का कहना है कि यूट्यूब ज़्यादा इसमें भूमिका निभा रहा है एज और सोशल मीडिया के माध्यमों से की तुलना में क्या आप भी ग्रामीण संस्कृति को प्रोत्साहित करने के लिए अपनी भूमिका निभाना चाहेंगे तो नब्बे दशमलव दो लोगों का कहना है कि हाँ वो निभाना चाहेंगे लेकिन इसमें कुछ ऐसे भी लोग हैं जो कहते हैं कि नहीं हमें इसमें कोई इंटरेस्ट नहीं है सो द परिणाम जो है विस्तारित इंटरनेट पहुँच इसमें सबसे बड़ी जो मुझे लगता है कि इसमें सबसे बड़ी जो कमी आ रही है वो अभी भी गाँव में ज़्यादातर पहुँच नहीं हो पाया है इंटरनेट का जो एक शायद डिजिटल साक्षरता इसमें अभी भी ऐसे गाँव में ज़्यादातर लोग होते हैं जिनको डिजिटल नॉलेज नहीं है वो नहीं जानते कि फ़ोन कैसे यूज़ करना है फ़ोन कैसे चलाते हैं तो सोशल मीडिया कैसे यूज़ करेंगे वो सामुदायिक शिक्षा इस इसके लिए ज़रूरी है कि वो सामुदायिक शिक्षा के में वो जाएँ और इसके लिए ऑर्गेनाइज की जाए इसके बन और सामुदायिक शिक्षा को प्रोत्साहित किया जाए उनके लिए और और निष्कर्ष है मेरा कि इसमें मैंने ये निष्कर्ष निकाला कि इसके लिए सकारात्मक और सामाजिक उपयोग के साथ इसको सुनिश्चित करना आवश्यक है कि इसकी पुनरुद्धार में ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोग इन्वॉल्व हों और इसका पॉजिटिव और निगेटिव पहलुओं को समझ कर, ग्रामीण समुदाय को सही रूप से इस्तेमाल करना चाहिए और नए रूपों को अपनाना चाहिए जो सोशल मीडिया के सकारात्मक पहलुओं और को प्रोत्साहित करे और इसके नकारात्मक पहलुओं को कम करे धन्यवाद नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट इज साक्षी मिश्रा एंड द सेकंड ऑथर इज श्रुति शर्मा ऑन द टॉपिक मीडिया लिटरेसी एंड फैक्ट चेकिंग हेलो आई एम श्रुति शर्मा इज हेयर टू प्रेजेंट रिसर्च पेपर ऑन मीडिया लिटरेसी एंड फैक्ट चेकिंग so beginning with the abstract the modern media field is increasingly filled with the false information and nowadays when the flow of false information in traditional media and on social media platform has increased dramatically so there are some keywords media literacy fact checking information literacy and media education introduction media literacy and fact checking examining the impact of co convergence of media in media literacy so the objective is to examine the concept of media literacy and its important in the context of convergence of media to analyze the challenges and opportunities posed by the convergence of media in the development of media literacy skill to investigate the role of fact checking in promoting critical thinking and combating misinformation in converged media environment qualitative case studies these are some fake news between the year 2017 to 21 so in 17 jama masjid was in dark due to non payment of electricity bills over 4 crores and in 2018 the video of abu dhabi crown princess saying jai shri ram goes viral and in 2019 indian army of kashmir are beating kashmiri people badly this was fake news and in 2020 fake tweets of sushant singh rajput was gone viral and in 2021 tata group was celebrated its 150th anniversary which was a wrong information and was a fake video these are pictures so fact checking plays a very crucial role in promoting accurate information and opposing misinformation and disinformation 
So here are several reasons why fact-checking is important. Accuracy and truth, preserving democracy, trust in journalism. So media literacy and fact-checking initiatives. So the strategies for enhancing media literacy and fact-checking are um, that enhancing media literacy and fact-checking skill is essential in today's information rich and complex media landscape. Uh, here are some strategies to promote media literacy and fact-checking. Critical evaluation of sources, source credibility, source bias and objectivity, source transparency and methodology. So promoting digital literacy skills. So promoting digital literacy skills is crucial in enhancing media literacy and fact-checking abilities. Digital literacy refers to the ability to navigate, evaluate, and critically engage with digital technologies and online information. Here are how promoting digital literacy skills can enhance media literacy and fact-checking. First is online information evaluation. Another is source verification and cross-referencing. Another is uh, understanding online ecosystems. Our last participant is our last participant is Ankita Bharti and the second author is Dr. Suman Kumari. She is speaking on the relevance of mobile application in healthcare, a case study of Delhi NCR. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, my topic for today is uh, relevance of mobile applications in healthcare, a study of Delhi NCR. So I'll just uh, uh, tell uh, you the introduction what, why I've taken this topic is because uh, slowly and slowly health has started making inroads into the health sector. Uh, if you want me to repeat, mine is relevance of mobile applications in healthcare. So now that more and more smartphones users have coming into the market and we are all using smartphones, so I wanted to know how many healthcare apps have actually been incorporated in our lifestyles. Uh, some of the major health uh, apps which I found uh, in the process uh, which was used was uh, My Fitness Pal, Strep Tracker, Healthy Fi Me, Apollo Pharmacy, Practo, Tata One, MG, and Fitbit. These are the commonly used um, healthcare apps which are used by uh, the individuals in Delhi NCR. The objectives of my research paper would be, uh, ma'am, there is a uh, slight change uh, that what I have submitted from the abstract because after I did a pilot testing and I discovered that I wanted to change my method. So the objectives are, uh, number one, to understand users' perspective of healthcare apps. Secondly, to identify the benefits of these healthcare applications. And third, to find out the barriers and challenges which are associated, associated with using of these applications. Uh, in the review, I studied a lot of journals and research papers which basically talks about how digital uh, mediums are used for uh, health promotion and communication, which talks of social media, mobile applications and all of those factors. Uh, my gap identification was I wanted, uh, I think more research uh, is uh, needed to understand a long term behavior impact as in I found out a lot of times uh, there is a smaller period of uh, study is uh, made that uh, for one month challenge people are using these apps and they are improving. So I really wanted to find out whether these apps are actually, uh, you know, being incorporated into the lifestyles for a longer period of time and they are changing the mindset of the people. Uh, secondly, also to find out the impact on health literacy and health behavior of the users. Is it actually improving their awareness level and they are moving towards prevention than caution? Uh, the methodology used. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, the uh, population that I have chosen for my research study, ma'am, which is Delhi NCR. Yes, yes. Yes, when ma'am said I... Uh, uh, the methodology used was uh, a qualitative. The data analysis method that I've used is thematic analysis. The sampling method being convenient sampling where I've taken an in-depth uh, interview in a semi-structured uh, format for 26 people. Uh, the theory that I have used uh, for my research is users and gratification theory because I wanted to find how there are three things, motivation, needs and gratification. So how people are using media for their own gratification and here health is the factor. So these are the basic 
basic uh, how I have incorporated the theory that because the theory actively suggests how media is used to fulfill their desires, so how it performs an active role in engaging their motivation and needs of health uh, initiatives, also how they utilize these apps to gratify themselves. For example, mostly I found out it was fitness, nutrition, dietitian, weight loss and all those things that people have started using these app applications for, uh, the f uh, which I found out these are some of the pointers that I found out. I'll just quickly say that uh, why these people have started using, what were their perceptions? So finally for health monitoring and tracking, secondly a lot of times for disease management, for example tracking their BP, sugar level and all of those plans. Uh, fitness and wellness was the mostly most used plans. Then about the basic health information because there are a lot of apps that Practo, One MG, which offers solutions talking about chatting with your doctor online. Uh, then about emergency assistance, Apollo, MaxCare, all the hospitals have now started using these apps wherein you can just dial a 24-7 thing and the ambulance and all the services are to your door. And also all the appointment booking and patient communication can also be done through these apps. These are some of the codes and the theme which I analyzed uh, through these interviews. Uh, I have uh, generated these uh, seven themes. Firstly, the first theme that I could make out was access to healthcare because I got these answers like it is very convenient to me, I can schedule it, I have these, I can do consultations sitting at my home also, uh, There, you know, it, I do not have to travel so far. Uh, second theme was communication with healthcare providers because people said that yes, uh, you know, I'm able to contact with my, you know, messaging with my uh, doctor, I can do a video calling there, I can online chat with them. I had three students uh, anonymous which said that they have hired mental uh, health also seeking uh, from these applications so did not want to identify themselves but they said yes yes I we use it for our mental illness things also for counseling so third theme which generated was health monitoring and disease management because it talks about a lot of fitness tracking symptom monitoring medication reminders and all sort of things now even mobile apps can tell you how many times water you should drink and all of those factors the Ma'am, I've done. I have not used. I wanted to use NVivo, but because of. Uh, but when I started doing these interviews. I was so grasped into it because they they said a lot of times which was repetitive and everything. So I started doing it manually also. Hmm. Yes, yes. I use these common common words like uh, when they say that it's very easy to use. I find it very easy, flexible, it is very cheap. These were the common words that I could make out. So I jot down all those points together and then I uh, generated these quotes. Like convenience, I said. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Presented, huh? Okay, okay. I have those. I have those quotes. So I would be including that in my paper also. Huh? Okay, generated. Got it. Got me. I have those quotes with me all written. So I would be introducing that in my paper. I would be including that. Thank you, ma'am, for the suggestion. Uh, then uh, health information management because because of the online health records and easy access to medical history, reducing all the paperwork. The next theme is informed decision making because mostly people said that it's very easy for us to understand what kind of health uh, issues we are facing and we can also do, do the self-assessment tools. Talking about the barriers, the major issue was a lot of people think that I cannot reveal all my health information, probably they do not find it too reliable. They have some trust and confidentiality issue. Some said because uh, on fitness also, for example, there are multiple apps. There are four lakh apps at the moment right now in Play Store. So they say every app has a different thing to say. So a lot of times it creates a fragmented M Health landscape in their mind. So they confuse whether to follow which theme. Uh, a lot of people said that biggest issue that they said that after I use it for two, three times, they say I want subscription money. I don't want to give that subscription. There is a pro app uh, for everything. So mostly people you know retry they do not want to use it when they are asked for a subscription they use it for free for a week and then they just draw back also their app crashes a lot of times sometimes there is a loading time sometimes user interface so these are some of the technical and monetary issue that we have faced uh, so these were the themes. Finally, moving to the conclusion, uh, conclusion, yes, mobile apps are being preferred because they are more flexible, accommodative, and versatility 
these being a convergent platforms uh, it shows that yes it bridges the gap between the patient and the doctor especially after uh, the use of lock after lockdown happened people started depending on it more uh, like what they have said in the interviews uh, the challenges identified were the technical issue data privacy and reliability concern so these need to be addressed so that more acceptance levels are generated among the users itself thank you so much now as we conclude this session i invite dr ruhi ma'am to give her concluding remarks first of all i would like to thank you for giving me an opportunity to be there and i am privileged and honored to be part of this uh, international conference where all the brilliant minds are together in one platform to share their ideas their uh, their innovations we can say the new uh, res research results which they have presented here beautifully so no doubt this is a gathering where we all have networked with each other we have shared our uh, knowledge uh, with everybody so thank you so much for inviting me and i am i'm thankful to amri sir uh, i'm thankful to uh, medali ma'am uh, and uh, kiran bala ma'am everybody who all are involved to make this international conference a great success thank you so much uh, i would like to invite dr manasi maheshri for her yeah wo bhi karna um thank you everyone uh, first of all congratulations to all those students who are presented today for the first time so a big round of applause for everyone <laughs> see it is very important that either you are a master student or undergraduate or phd that you come out with something new that's the key of any research many of you know many of the scholars they actually did read something online they did uh, you know they did the review kind of thing not exactly review but something what others have done they read about it they came up with their own article so um, unless you add something new to a research it is not exactly your research it's a review paper it's a review article so that's one problem which i would like to highlight that now after listening to your colleagues your you know the colleagues from other universities also that how people are adding to the research research needs to be uh, new you need to uh, contribute in some way to the existing literature and not only read and come up with your own article think based on your experience and observations you are a neutral person you have to talk to the experts we are nobody to comment on anything unless we are an expert and as as a researcher you are just going to talk to people in depth interviews focus group discussions i saw these words in the presentation which are actually tools of data collection somebody talked about n vivo it's a software to analyze the data so but then you need to have your own data based on that data you come out with some conclusion right so that's the key of any research but uh, never mind it was a good experience to see everybody working and um, you know and at least trying to understand and act in my session the session we had in the you know the parallel room they uh, the students have come up with new topics which was very interesting starting with chat gpt online gaming and you know because there were a couple of students from the english department also so there was lot of learning thing for me also that people are bringing up new topics which is very very important so thank you everyone thank you on uh, thank you on behalf of dr suman also she co-chaired and thank you so much for your support thank you dr pramod kumar pande he was also helping me uh, and thank you everyone thank you for your insights now i would like to invite uh, dr mathri ganju adin uh, to felicitate chairs of the of these two technical sessions i would like to invite uh, dr amrish saxena uh, dr susmita wala ma'am dr rohilal
गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी दिस इज अ रियली डिफरेंस डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस ऑल टूगेदर हैविंग आई कैन आउटसाइड द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ डी एम ई डेली मेट्रोपोलिटन एजुकेशन अ डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस ऑल्सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ दिस यूनिक पार्टनरशिप बिटवीन डी एम ई एंड मानव रचना इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट this has set a new path this will show to the world how collaboration can take place at the end of the fourth day proceedings of icon 6 i feel contented to see how this conference has been molded in the proliferation of new ideas and innovative approaches the panel discussion on sustainable development goals with focus on health was very engaging thereafter the two technical session broad research outcomes of diverse nature this year the theme of the conference is identity culture and agenda driven news cast in all the session this theme and uh, related sub themes have been unfolded in various ways all these sessions have added value to this conference i am obliged to professor mathali ganchu and professor kiran bala for making this happen thank you to all participants i also thank my colleague and students from dme and uh, manav rachana immensely to the success of today's deliberations thank you thanks to all of you now i would request dr krishna pandey associate professor department of journalism and mass communication to give word of thanks thank you very much ma'am so a very good evening to everyone after a long fruitful day of deliberations and discussions and technical sessions the fourth day of the international conference on identity culture and agenda driven news cast popularly known as icon 6 at manurashna international institute of research and studies concludes on an optimistic note of meeting again in the future i dr krishna pande associate professor department of journalism and mass communication take this opportunity to thank all the guests and dignitaries for being part of this august gathering my special thanks to the management of mriars for their full cooperation and support in organizing the conference i extend my heartfelt thanks to our partners in the conference and the guest of the day Professor Dr. Amri Saxena and Professor Dr. Sushmita Bala, and the team of faculty members from DME who took out time to be part of this conference. In this long list of thanks, I must not forget my own dean, Professor Dr. Mathali Ganju, and the department head, Professor Dr. Kiran Bala, for their ashirwad, guidance, and support. They have been the torch bearers for us, and without them, this day would not have been possible. I also thank my faculty members Dr Rahul Ankita Dr Jay Mr Mantosh and the supporting staff Ms Gitanjali ma'am and her team Mr Dushyant and his team behind the camera and not to forget the IT team thank you all thank you very much last but not the least I thank all the scholars and participants who presented their papers and won accolades I also thank Mihika and Gunjan where are they I also thank Mihika and Gunjan for their contribution in making the conference a grand success. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.